Hi, my name is Julie McCarty, and I'm a Knowledge Management Specialist with the USAID Bureau for Food Security. And I'm here doing an AgriLinks Knowledge Management Insights interview with Ryan King, who is a Peace Corps volunteer leader currently serving in Ethiopia and who manages some of the Feed the Future agricultural projects in the country. Uh, so Ryan, if you wouldn't mind just giving us a snapshot of your uh, service and your project in Ethiopia and the relationship with Feed the Future. Of course. Uh, Feed the Future has been crucial to uh, the Peace Corps Ethiopia agricultural project and the health project. Um, the agricultural project has a three-tiered approach to how we're trying to assist the uh, Feed the Future effort in Ethiopia. Uh, the first goal that we're trying to achieve is to increase the number of household gardens and the production of those household gardens. The second is we're trying to alleviate some of the environmental degradation that has happened through tree planting and uh, fuel efficient stoves. And the third is really where we're trying to engage the youth through education um, and primarily through camps and uh, environmental clubs in the schools. Great. Uh, so as a Peace Corps volunteer, what type of information do you need to be able to do your job well? Well, I, I, anything that's scalable all the way down to the micro level, really. We're, we deal primarily with households. Um, so we, we're trying to find best practices for small-scale gardens, um, small-scale tree plantings, micro orchards, agroforestry projects that work in the backyard, anything that can really work on that really small scale. And we want to get the very best of what we can utilizing appropriate technology. So uh, Peace Corps really strives to have a very low funding, low cost approaches to development. And, mm -hmm. and we're really looking constantly for better ways to do that. So having the up-to-date technical information about the actual ag science that you're working with is very useful. Oh, crucial, absolutely crucial. We, we, we try to incorporate the best, uh, best, best resources that we have available. Um, it, it's sometimes a challenge to, to get the, the very best and newest information out to our volunteers, but um, it is something we are constantly striving to do better at. So then tell us a bit about the challenges of obtaining this information, uh, bandwidth issues both for volunteers and for the communities that you're serving. Ethiopia struggles with a very weak telecommunications sector. We, uh, we, we have bandwidth connection issues and, and, and power outages on a consistent basis throughout the country. Um, dispersing information, even when we receive it as a post to our volunteers in the field, is a constant struggle and one that um, we've tried to take some innovative solutions to. So along that lines with the innovative solutions, how has Peace Corps Ethiopia dealt with delivering information to its volunteers who live in these areas with low bandwidth? Right. So at the, initially we, we, we went with paper products so that we wouldn't have to rely on any, any, any technology, but actually that, is, that, that proved to be a very expensive solution where, where we were purchasing $50 manuals on agroforestry and $40 manuals on small scale gardening and it didn't really scale well because we were having to do that with every iteration of volunteers that came through. And we have about 240 volunteers in the field. So instead we decided to purchase the very lowest end uh, Kindle um, from Amazon in, in a uh, 250 Kindle purchase and put all of the materials uh, digitally on those Kindles when they first come to country. So that the volunteers take the Kindles with them to the site and uh, are able to charge them when they have power. The Kindle's battery lasts for about a week without any additional charges. Um, they're able to access all those books in a very small form factor, whereas before we had essentially a suitcase full of books that we'd send our volunteers with. Um, in addition to that, when they come back to the post, we're able to refresh their Kindles with the newest materials mm -hmm. as they come available to us and we buy as an institution rather than you know, on an individual book basis. And I was also wondering, um, I hear a lot about video being a useful medium for training um, in communities for Peace Corps. Would it be useful to have more hard copies since you don't have um, access to uh, you know, streaming video? Yes, exactly. Uh, DVD, um, I think, is the way to go there because streaming it live, uh, the internet isn't capable of supporting that in, in Ethiopia. Uh, the, 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 ba the bandwidth just isn't there to really stream video live. But I do believe that video is really worth having that physical demonstration. If you're talking about a concept, seeing it happen in front of you is so much more powerful than hearing it described or reading about it. It's, it's just a challenge of finding how to best bring those videos to the field in a way that isn't reliant on the, on the interconnectivity of, of the volunteer. 
So then, uh, based on your experiences, what recommendations would you make to the development community uh, as to how we can do a better job delivering necessary technical information uh, to volunteers or um, you know, implementers in the field? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it, there's a huge time lag from best practices being discovered in a lab to best practices being implemented in their field. And a lot of that, it comes from the the 10-year, 12-year filter down that it takes to get those materials printed and out into the field. I'd, I'd love to see a database of some kind with small-scale, uh, technologically appropriate solutions out there that Peace Corps volunteers can access, or better yet, Peace Corps posts can access and populate things like Kindles mm -hmm. prior to the volunteers getting there, and, ha and having real good scientific basis for what we tell our volunteers and how we train them. And then what about your beneficiaries? How would you recommend that they, going forward, best access all of this great information so that they have equal access? Yeah, I, I think open source videos um, where, where the digital rights aren't being controlled by an organization that are freely available allow volunteers to make copies of, of things in the, in the towns. They do have access to CDs or DVDs in the towns, and you can leave that as kind of a permanent record so that when, when, when the technology improves that they have the, those materials at hand. In addition, I think that incorporating a, a, a text-based and an audio-based format to anything we're, we're rolling out so that the, the data package is smaller. Uh, you know, a video could be two, three gigabytes, whereas a, an, audio of, an audio transcript of that video mm -hmm. could be 100 megabytes. So you're talking about a scalability factor there that's much smaller. And you could incorporate a lot more on a single disk. All right, well, Ryan, I really appreciate you taking right. the time. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah.